Bottle Ned here. I am really excited about today, and I'm not even gonna dig a hole. Yes, that's right. The reason why is because I don't need to. There was a huge storm that ravaged the west coast of the United States. And today, we're gonna look through the embankments of creeks, sloughs, and bays to try to locate all the bot that washed out because of these major storms. Digging the West with Bottle Ned. What are you doing, Can Man? Yeah, I'm paying for lunch. <laughs> Picking up some recycling? I'm just doing part of my cleanup. Every day's coastal cleanup for me. <laughs> so, where are we gonna go? We're gonna jump in the creek. What are we gonna find, man? It's the real thing, Coke. But glass ones, early embossed ones. What's the story with this place? Bay West, the hobble skirt ones. Oh. They called, they fashioned the bottle in 1915 after that famous actress, Mae West, with a corset shaped bottle. Pre-1915, they were all boring and straight, but they decided to make their bottle shaped like a curvaceous woman. By the early 20th century, Coca-Cola had already been around for 20 years and had grown pretty popular. Enough so that other products were emerging trying to imitate the brand, with similar sounding names to fool the public into buying their soda also. Coke didn't like the competition and knew that its biggest problem was its packaging design, which was pretty boring. So they held a competition to see who could design the most unique, eye-catching bottle for their product. And along comes Swedish bottler Alexander Samuelsson, who understood one main thing, sex sells. So he designed a sexy, curvaceous, hourglass-shaped bottle that pretty much had the same shape as a woman's ideal body. And what do you know, the design was a hit and became the official Coke bottle style starting in 1915. In the 1920s, a magazine referred to the bottle design as the May West because it resembled the voluptuous figure of the vaudeville actress. The patent was renewed on Christmas Day in 1923, given official trademark status in 1951, and the rest is history. They're really cool because they have different towns on the bottom, town names on the bottom. Every town had its own bottling plant, even some of the smallest towns. And they were all returnable deposits, obviously, so they had the name on the bottom. What's the age that the hobble skirt Coke bottles were made? You know, like what's the age range? The embossed ones go from about 1915 at the oldest, and then I think they stopped doing the embossed ones probably sometime in 1950s or 60s, then they went to painting them. Sweet! Yeah, we only want the embossed ones. Yeah, why, why not the painted ones? They're just boring and new and... They resemble the new graphics. ones that they, they still, still make. make them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah. Right, yeah. and that's called ACL, right? The painted yeah. ones? Yeah, yeah. Which stands for? I think it's applied colored label or applied ceramic label I thought like it that. was I thought it was acrylic coated label could be could be there's there's uh, I'm not sure but yeah ACL yeah. right on yeah okay so here's the hammy's uh Batmobile aka bottle mobile <laughs> was there a bottle in there I don't know I don't think I, I mean maybe oh okay you have another bucket yeah that one's no good Okay. It's been in the sun too long. Kind of like you. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been if you haven't been in the sun? <laughs> been underground. Gloves. <laughs> From Home Depot. Gardening department. <laughs> Hat. From Goodman's. <laughs> Detergent bucket. Pico. <laughs> Remember, if anyone asks, we're cleaning up the bay, right? I'm always clean, coastal cleanup, you know. This place needs a cleanup. 
Yeah. Comes in hand again short. <laughs> Make quick U turns under the sheets too. Woo, look at all the broken glass. Oh, it's right here? Some of it. Holy shit. No, it goes all the way down there. Look at this. Look at this. It's a bottling works. There was a Coca-Cola bottling works for a few decades around the middle of the 20th century near where we are. And this is their dump site. Houses. Do I not turn you on to the best bottle spots? Oh, yeah. 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 So I did turn you on. Oh my God! There's one right there. <laughs> Careful now. Oh. 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 Don't cry. Whoa. Oh. Oh. All right. Which one is it? Woo. Ah. San Rafael, huh? Ooh. Where's that? Man, we're far away from there. Yeah. Oh, you missed a bunch over here. <laughs> These aren't cokes though. I think I see a big I chief tell though. Somebody ate it or not. Nobody's ever Oh, that was that. That's a <laughs> lever right. That's a big chief. Oh. oh the big chief. Now, Sorry, big boy. It's the one with the Indian on. That's the half size chief. Look at that. Back when the Indians were finally starting to get some respect, they put them on a coin, aka the buffalo nickel. And they also put them on the Coke bottle. Would yeah. you say this was a bottling plant of oh, some kind? Oh, definitely. There had to be a bottling plant right up up above where we're at here. Yeah. Up on shore. Oh, crap. Oh, right there. Don't forget I, that one. I should have brought the leg. Oh, really? Get it. Yeah, it will go through this. That's the one we use. Yeah, I'll go back up and get it. Oh, it's moving too much, eh? Yeah. A little squiggly wiggly. Oh, oh baby. Oh. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, this is the kind of stuff where it's, it's so thick, you need to use the, the four prong saw. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, there's a big chief. Yep. What do you got there, chief? That's the big chief coke. Look, you can see the Indian. Cool. How? Say it. Yeah. Oh, canceled. Fucking, uh, he got scalped. <laughs> Holy shit. I know. It's crazy. Dude, somebody was tweaking right here. Look. Oh my God, that's sick, dude. That is sick. Ready to climb into the Coke cave? Oh, yeah. That is sick. It's the Coca Cola Bottling Works time capsule from like World War II. Yeah, and some of it's even earlier. There's some Christmas Cokes in here. Yeah, the Christmas Coke is December 25th, 1923. And why, that's that's why they call it the Christmas yep, Coke. because the they, patent date on it. It's Christmas. Jeez. It's Christmas for Holy you. Coca-Cola. <laughs> wow. Oh, we ought to just camp out in here. Seriously. This is crazy. There's some big chiefs waiting for you. Look at that. The one that's not broken out of the thousands of broken ones. Yeah. That's crazy. Almost. Almost. Oh man, these things are just been laying here for like almost a hundred years. Wow. Oh, another perfect one. What city? Wow. Wow. Reading? Really? Wow. Let's see it. Let's, Redding? Let's it. Wow, Redding, California. Wow. Oh, yeah, look I at it. Just big chief. Oh, I don't know what that one is. What is it? Some kind of a deco era soda from like the 1930s. Oh, interesting. Man, I gotta go get my scratching tool. Okay. Oh, yeah, that is a deep one. It doesn't have any shoulder. Embossing. Another one. Another non broken one. Let's see the city. The Valley Joe. Really? Oh my god. This bottle and E40 are both from the same town. Wow. Sweet. There's a lot of them that are almost, almost. This is sick. 
There's a Delaware punch. Oh. Another Delaware. When I was a kid, when I first started walking the bay in the early 1970s, we would leave all these Coke bottles behind. We yeah. We wouldn't even pick them up. Now the stuff is just vintage enough for yeah. people to actually want Oh, them. they stopped making these off ones. They're kind of like Legos. You just have to dislodge one and then the whole thing will... Holy Coca-Cola, Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so much glass, it's almost like digging in rocks. Yeah. It's pure glass, huh? Yeah. I did a saloon hole one time. Years ago, it was just like that. Go get the scratching tool. Okay. Uh, oh. First, let me pull out a couple more that are just sticking out. <laughs> I can't resist the temptation. Yeah, I know you can't. I missed one right here. Ah. Oh, wow. Uh, Art Deco. Uh, All this glass can be a little hard on the knees. <laughs> yeah, I know. You need your knee pads for this. Uh, I gotta get that one. Oh. There you go. There's a nice mint one for hey, you. What if we find an amber coke? Yeah. And I don't think we're old enough. The amber ones are the straight sided ones. Here's an early one San Francisco Christmas Coke. All right. Hey, that one's 1923. Oh, that's a Christmas one. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. There you go. The dates on these Coke bottles can be found to the right of the Dura Glass Saturn symbol, halfway down the side of the bottle. Check this one. Oh. I think we need a special tool for this. Okay. God, I need some knee pads too. <laughs> yeah, you're always using those things. I know, that's how I got my raise. Help <laughs> glass be top. Yeah. It's like a way sharper glass beach. <laughs> so what are we gonna get that's gonna help us with digging this giant glass We're gonna jam? Get a four prong potato rake that works really good in rocks. Okay. And when there's so much glass that the glass is just like digging through rocks. Nice. Oh, that's a chingolera one. Chipped one, but I'll pull it out anyway, see what it is. Oh, it's a Christmas Coke too from Fresno. So this doesn't break anything? Uh, oh, good. You gotta be careful sometimes, but with this, this kind of heavy Coke bottles, we should be fine. I don't know, Aquaman. It looks like I'm just gonna spear it with a freaking no. sea trident. <laughs> Damn. You are getting after it, hamster style. <laughs> I can't even hear you through this shrill sound of broken glass. Ain't nothing but a hamster party. <laughs> yeah, I know. How deep do you, would you go in this? I don't know. We need to ask the Bee Gees. <laughs> How deep will you go? This one, Whoa! Bottle lunch. Pepsi. The competition. <laughs> Holy crap! Look at this. I got a. I got a Coke asteroid. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like a Coke con conglomerate. Oh, well, look at that strata, a strata of coke. I think that's the layer you want. That's it the is. level. That's where all the whole ones are. Yeah. Whoa, Oops. man. Hey, careful with the coke. Jeez, man, it's endless. Oh man, we're really, really back here. We're loading the buckets up. We got cokes, and we got more cokes. Look, at, I can't even reach. Oh my god, it's just endless. It's a freaking Coke Topia. Whoa, that's still got the bottle cap on it. How crazy is that? 
Coketopia. Ugh. Unbelievable. Well, there's a seltzer. A seltzer bottle. Pressurized. These big seltzer water bottles are also called soda siphons and are designed to maintain pressure inside the bottle and prevent its contents from going flat. You can press the trigger to release the seltzer without worrying about losing all the carbonation inside the bottle. Oh, you washed it. We've got a special oh. Coke here. What, what, what's that one? That's different. Uh, let me see. They, they always have patent dates on them. Wow, this one's got so much case where you can't see the patent dates. It's old. That's a really, Probably it's a, an a different one. shape. Number 15. 1915. Is it 1915? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately it doesn't have the city on the bottom, but that's the original first mold they used, the first patent, when they did the May West, AKA hobble skirt Coke bottle. And who was Mae West, just for people who don't know? Oh, she was a famous actress, very known for her, her curves her curvaceous figure and her wisecracking. All right, come back to reality, dude. <laughs> um, so in, she, the, she, in, the, in the time of the no talking movies, my, got my it. friend who used to paint uh, backdrop scenery in Hollywood before the no talk talking movies, he, he knew her. Is your friend a vampire who's 150 no, he, years he old? he died about 25 years ago, but he lived to be almost 90. Oh, wow. He, he was a, a well-known artist. The uh, shape on it is a little more exaggerated the curve a little steeper the original 1915 first may west hobble skirt coca-cola yeah let's compare it to well we'll just here's a broken one we can compare shapes so that you can tell there's a slightly different shape on the, the one on the left it's really hard to see in the video but it's a little more obvious in person it's just a little fatter up here. Right here. Yeah, yeah steeper and then fatter right here at the bosom. Nice. You missed one, man. Well, let's see. You missed two. Come on now. Yeah. You almost missed one. I know. These have been all headless. One. Headless horsemen. Ooh, not that one. Good. Oh, don't you lie to me, man. Good eye, weed hopper. Oh, double. That was a twofer. Right. Hell yeah. Okay. Let's go uh, look at those ones in the water and come back for these. Oh, wow. Step out on the box. <laughs> There's like two or three laying out there. You see them all look real too. Whoa. One, two, that one might be broken. Then three. Oh my God. Four. Yeah. Let's see if Captain Longarms will yes. step aside now. Okay, guys. I'll get this little shore hugger while you're doing that. <laughs> Don't what? Oh, I thought it was whole. It's got a blowout. Who did it? Whoa. First coat with a blowout. Glory hole for you. All right. You'd be good at carnival games. You are a carnival oh, game. Gotta... Oh, you chinga. Throw in the water more. Oh, jeez. All right. Where the hell is it? All of a sudden you can't see it. You're like grabbing the wrong thing. Stupid barnacle rock. All right. Make way for Mr. Fantastic, Hammy. Uh, oh, it's stuck on something. We got a snag. Uh. Nice job. Good job. You know, this is a fool's errand. I'm just going to get my waders and put my waders on and walk out there. That sounds like a plan. Why don't you, Junior, yeah, since I'll you can't... I'll spot him. I'll spot him. Yeah, that water's too deep for you, so maybe you should just walk the shore. That's it. I'm, I'm only good underground, not underwater. Oh, and under the sheets. Oh, God, stop it, please. <laughs> okay, got the waders on. We're going to go do some bot fishing here. <sighs> Booga booga. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> throw that one back. You've got to keep on digging. Oh. Oh, that's not even a bot. Yeah. 
ye dogs. Ye dogs of ye pirates. Jeez. You always want to start downstream and work your way upstream so you don't silt yourself. If I started upstream, I'd be like in my own silt. Take away all my visibility, I tell you. I looked at it all. No, not that one. What? It's there at the top of it. What are you Look. talking about? Keep going, keep going. About three Dude, you backseat you. mud larker. What? What are you talking about? That? Yeah. I right probably there. threw that in there. Right there. It's right there. You, you happy? That's backseat mud larker. Uh, it's called a shoreline. Oh, line. sorry. Shoreline mud larker. <laughs> The nice easy ones. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> he beat me. He won. Freaking hamster. <sighs> Can't beat that guy. Sometimes it's the person working the least that finds the most. Oh, this has got to be the one. This is going to be it, baby. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Intact. Hobble Street Coke. Let's see the city. Oh, how appropriate. Eureka! <laughs> Is that a green one too? No, it just must be the... Well, that's probably the slime inside of it. Yeah. Whoa, dude, it's a like Zen hamster. What? Shit, I hope it's not a shark. Ugh. Ugh. Ah. <laughs> that felt like a bottle. <laughs> Racine, Wisconsin. So what was that? Some kind of a powdered uh, thing that you could make, um, uh, add water and make malted milk. Oh. It came in powder for For children? No, for everybody. Cool. They come in like three sizes. There's even like a half gallon size, a giant jumbo one. Horlicks? Costco size. Horlix Malton Milk, Racine, Wisconsin. Huh. And what's the age on that? This is probably um, early 1900s, maybe teens. Mm -hmm. You dig them in privies. And what about that thing? This is the older one, the aqua one. They come clear too. This is an unembossed whiskey pip. Yeah. From, from just before Prohibition. Yeah. Late teens probably. Will it even turn purple? Boy. Oops. Maybe not. That's hard to say. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I don't want to find out. <laughs> it's like your gender. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> All right. All right. We need the provocator. Oh, let's wash one of the cokes just so we can show everyone. Oh, you're gonna make me do it? You got the waders on. Lazy hammy. God damn it. Okay. There you go. It's a cool, just your standard hobble skirt Coke bottle. Um, this is a later one patented with the D105, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. That's after, um, what's, wh when does this design start? The one that says patent number D? Those are World War II. World War II, when does it start? And, uh, up. World War II and up, okay. Up, yeah. yeah. And the date can be found right here. Right there, 1940. Let's zoom in on that. There you go, 1940. To the right of the Duro glass symbol, Saturn, right there. So, what'd you think? That was fun. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think I got a, a caffeine and sugar rush from digging all them cokes up. <laughs> Don't trip now. Yeah. Don't be I'm tripping. tripping. <laughs> Something I wanted to point out was that that Swedish dude, Alexander Samuelson, wasn't the first person to consider that curvaceous, sexy lady shape for a design for a bottle. Actually, in the 19th century, in 1871, a bottle made for a San Francisco mineral springs called Crystal Soda Water Company, which bottled soda water from the Crystal Springs, just south of San Francisco, they patented this design shape which has similar elements to the hobble skirt Coke. It kind of goes down into an hourglass shape down here and then into this pedestal foot thing. So very similar. It has a bulbous lady shape that you want to put your lips to. So yeah, so there you have it. The Coke bottle, not 
100% a novel design. And now it's time for a bot larking tip from Bottle Ned. Welcome to Bottle Ned's Bot Larking 101. Here's a tip that it took me years to learn, surprisingly. Uh, here's one I just found, by the way. So when you're looking through the cloudy water after a storm for a bot, old bot, of course, there's lots of new bot, way more new bot than old bot, but it's hard to see. And you don't want to just pick every stupid piece of crap up and figure out it's a piece of junk. So best thing to do, least invasive, take your finger and run it along the base. And if you feel those stupid bumps, that is almost 100% certainty that you're dealing with a new bot. Just bumps on the base, man. Just feel the base. The top, you know, a little bit more tricky, but if you feel bumps on the base, don't pick it up. See, here's a non-bumpy one that I just marked. See, no bump on the base. It's not even that old, 1930s. Whoa, from a California dairy. Phone 5-7. Yeah, I don't know why it took me that long to ever figure that one out, but yeah. The bases of modern bots made after 1950 will typically have some type of raised pattern running around the bottom edge of the base on the outside of the central panel. The dorky name for this feature is the anti-skid texture region. And this is a quick way of knowing that you're fondling a modern bot. Be sure to keep in mind that some early bots have embossed lettering or other types of designs on the base. But don't worry, with some practice, you'll be able to easily distinguish the difference. Whoa, an artifact from the woke period. In this house, we believe in science. Except when we let our stupid sign pollute the creek. <laughs> oh ho ho, what have we here? I don't even have to feel the base on this one because I see me a blob top, man. Oh, oh. Ooh. Ah. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> blob soda water bottle. <laughs> That's crazy. How is that not embossed? <laughs> oh god. Oh crap. <laughs> 1870s. Oh, shit. It looks like it has some whittle, though. Oh, yeah. That's a San Francisco soda water bottle. 1870s. Wow. Whittle. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Isn't that the most satisfying sound ever? And that too. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Beautiful. Widow. Damn. Talk about your all time close calls that have been colored and embossed. What the hell's this thing? Oh, shit. Ooh. Oh. In kind of an older area. Oh, look. Our sonar imaging, Captain, it's picking up the vague shape of a 40 ounce. No need to check for the base on that one. PVC pipe. Is that old? Oh, 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 crap, god damn it. Come a long way from Belfast, Ireland, right? Ooh, round bottom soda from Ireland. Hey, it's not my lucky charm though. Not with that chip, chingle era. Imported here all the way from Belfast. That, along with the Titanic. <laughs> Sunk in at the bottom in the deep. Round bottom sodas were designed to only ever be stored on their side. This is because back in the day, soda bottles were sealed with corks 
made of wood, which would shrink when it dried out. So by staying on its side, the liquid in the bot would be in constant contact with the cork, preventing it from drying out. Also, these bottles were made of thick glass to prevent breakage during long sea travel and could be stacked on top of one another, maximizing the size of each load in a shipment. Oh, and by the way, besides from this bottle, the Titanic was also made in Belfast, Ireland. Oh, man. Getting rockier. We're getting to the culvert section. Let there be some light. There we go. That's better. Actually, you know what? It's not better. I've seen Stephen King's It one too many times here. No, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Even Bottle Ned has his limits of what he'll do for the bot. Ugh. Great Western 1870s blob soda. Some nice whittle. Whittle, I tell you. Great whittle to it. Fire aqua color. Applied top. Blob. Blown at the San Francisco Glassworks, probably. About 1875. Bottle gasm it a little bit with some different light. Light's really important. There we go. Oh my God. Yeah, very attractive. A piece of Western fire aqua, hand blown glass there. Here's some different light. Oh yeah, a little more moody. Mmm. Dramatic. Look at the whittle. Oh. Yeah. Dot base. Beautiful, beautiful glass. San Francisco glass just has a tendency to, from this period, you know, 1870s, 1880s, I think it's just a little darker. The aquas. You know, other glass from the East Coast, English glass, other countries, is less, less of this dark color prevalent in the, um, in the soda water bottles and stuff like that. Just great fire aqua. And now let's head to old San Francisco for some mudlarking. creepy place under the big city. I've traveled down to San Francisco, one of my favorite places to look in the mud for old bot. So we're gonna do some mud larking at night. And um, the smells down here, I can't even describe how amazing they are. It's like low tide mud, barnacles, and that oil that they use on docks, it's called creosote. When, they, when you mix all those things together, ooh, oh, you have a nice smell. It's just, oh, it just smells like history. I don't know, I can't explain it any better than that. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and find some bot. It's good. We had a really low tide tonight. We're gonna change things up a little bit because privies are cool and everything, but I don't know, this is this is a change of venue. I think we all need. Let's play which rock is gonna move and cause me to trip. It's an Indiana Jones. Whoa. 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 
Oh, not even moved. That was anticlimactic. Whoa, go, go, I would move right and jump off it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mud larking. American style. This is a cool spot for the bot. So they dump these stupid rocks here as breakwater for this canal here. But um, the one good thing is the rocks are so heavy, they squeeze the mud below, causing the bot to pop up like mushrooms. <laughs> so every once in a while, you get a little surprise. That is definitely a handmade bottle. I don't think it's very interesting though. Huh. Huh. Oh, that's turn of the century though. No squiggly things on the base. Probably like right after the machine making. Oh, oh, hello. Well, well, shit. Oh, God, no. I don't feel any bumps, unfortunately. That is a tooled fifth from the turn of the century. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, I do feel bumps. Oh, JH Cutter. Wow. Whoa. Sweet. J.H. Cutter Whiskey. That's a San Francisco whiskey bottle from about 1910. That's just, just waiting here. See what I mean? Something about these boulders, man. They help the bot. Beautiful, cleaned up shot of the bot. J.H. Cutter, a whiskey with agents in San Francisco. Kentucky whiskey. still here. Damn. Ancient. Born in New Hampshire in 1807, John Hastings Cutter entered the liquor trade with his brothers at a young age. By the 1850s California Gold Rush period, barrels full of the J.H. Cutter whiskey brand were being shipped from Kentucky to California and were increasingly popular with Westerners. Unfortunately, John loved whiskey a little too much, and by 1860, he was dead of liver disease. A guy named Charles P. Mormon took over the rights to the J.H. Cutter brand, and that should have been it. But the plot thickens from there, because John Cutter had a son, John Francis Cutter, also a heavy drinker, who entered the Western whiskey market and started selling whiskey using his own name, J.F. Cutter, in the late 1860s, which was similar enough to J.H. Cutter so as to attract a good audience, as well as confusion among brands, which pissed Mormon off, as well as his partner, San Francisco liquor wholesaler Anson Hodling, who was in business with Mormon. The decade of the 1870s was filled with numerous lawsuits and bitter conflict between the two liquor firms for dominance of the lucrative Western whiskey market. Anson Hodling hated John Francis Cutter so much that he had this to say about him. John F. Cutter never made any whiskey and knew nothing about it except to drink it. He was a wild, roving, ne'er-do-well a nuisance to his friends and of no benefit to himself. The only thing of actual value about him was the name his father gave. Apparently, there could have been some truth to these words, as several months later, a California judge ruled against John Francis Cutter because of his erratic habits, causing John to totally lose it and start stalking Charles Mormon until one day he showed up in his office in Kentucky and assaulted him with his cane knife. John was sent to jail and died while incarcerated, probably while having withdrawals from being off the sauce. Despite the chaos, the JF and JH Cutter brand names lived on as being some of the most recognized and popular whiskey brands in the West. until. 1919, that is, when the prohibition put them all out of business. I mean, whoa, there's another one, a dandy flask. What the hell? Please be embossed. Oh, oh, oh. God, that's, that's 1910. That, that's, that's freaking 
Tooled top. That's amazing. Dandy flask. It's not machine made. No, sir. That's a whiskey flask. Some old hobo threw in here 120 years ago or so. That is Barney badass. Just three, just triple hit right in a row. Boom. Sweet. Look at that. History. How does that thin glass not get broken by a rock? It's, it's so weird. They just they just like pop out. See, there's an old piling, the remnants of an old dock piling. So there was probably piers here with people walking on them, drinking. <laughs> wow, cool. I brought my probes in case. A bishwanka. Oh, what the hell? There's another one. What? This is crazy. Call me maybe. Oh, the rocks got it. The rocks got that one, dude. Oh, man. Let's hope it wasn't embossed. Oh, damn it. Oh, God. Oh, no. Of course it's embossed. I should have known because it's broken. James de Fromer. San Francisco. It's a tool top. Whiskey. Rock's got it. Damn. Rock probably fell over it. Whoa, dude. What the hell? Bot pocket. Better than a hot pocket. All right. The tide's going out a little bit. We like that. It's cool. Just look at the bricks, the remnants of 100 year old industry strewn on the shore. History just surrounded by all this, all these new buildings. It's really it's kind of a trip. Oh, and a parking ticket. Here's a good, uh, here's a good artifact from somebody's crappy day. $66. It's kind of cheap for around here. Usually they tax your ass a lot more than that. This stupid state area <laughs> what's that thing when you're hunting and the animal's too small so you throw it back yeah they should have that with bot art deco soda bottle from the 40s or 50s throw it back look at all this random crud just in here a lot of this is debris from the 1906 earthquake that was just dumped in here, which kind of, which kind of makes sense because those bottles are about the same age, if not a tiny bit newer. So this is post 1906 earthquake dumping. Ooh, what is this? Huh. Oh, still something older could be in here too. Oh, well, it looks like one of those, those whiskey flasks, those square ones from the just before the prohibition or maybe right after. Look the way it's just tucked right around an old dock piling. Look at that. Just hugging the old piling. Yeah, it's a full pint. It's a square machine made whiskey flask. Some 1920s or late teens, World War I bum dude getting drunk. Throwing it off the dock. The dock. That's weird. During the Prohibition era of 1920s America, a limited amount of whiskey was still sold to the public, but only with a prescription, and it was for medicinal purposes only. Check out the heavy punishment you could get if you use the whiskey in this bot to party with. A hundred to a thousand bucks which is in the tens of thousands of dollars by today's standards, and two years in jail. We're in a maxi oyster shell pocket here. It's eroded out of this embankment. Probably the remnants of an old oyster bar saloon. But you know what else they had in saloons? Bottle. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Yeah, entering the portal. Oh, oh it's, 
smells so good. Dock tar and low tide. Oh. Anybody who knows, knows. Ooh. base. Uh, might be a stupid ketchup though. It's definitely not hot soda. Uh, uh, hurry up. I'm impatient. Uh. Ew. <laughs> Turn of the century ketchup bottle. You're fired. Ghostly piling. Uh, terracotta pipes they discarded into this waterway. They were doing a sewering project in the street, had some leftover, just tossed them in here. The uh, 1906 earthquake was a, a big excuse for the planners to build new land rec reclamation projects. They could infill more and they could literally take all the fill that was all the debris that of the buildings that collapsed in 1906 and make new shorelines like this. Whoa, there's, that's actually part of a building. It's funny. That's part of a 19th century, like a Victorian fancy building, like an old classical revival design, you know, on the front, some entablature. That's really cool. It's a building that fell down in 1906. Here's a more recent artifact. I actually remember the dude that was drinking these here 20 years ago. There was like a bum living up there before they made it all purdy. And he was drinking this like cheap shit, like St. Ides or whatever this crap is. I remember in these bottles and it was like, it was like a hundred of them right here. And, and, and one day I came and his, his friend said that he had died. <laughs> Freaking killed himself by drinking this crap. This swill. <laughs> Jeez. There's one of his bottles. More recent dead dude's bottle. It's weird. Haunted. <sighs> Whoa, what's... What the hell is that, a flask? Whoa. Another dead dude's bottle, but this guy's been dead a little longer. It looks like 1940s. I'm not even going to pull it out. Oh, fine. I know you guys want me to pull it out. It's kind of protected in there, though. Oh. Protected again by... Oh, God, it's in there so hard. I'm sorry. sat down for a break. Ooh, that's a rough seat sitting on those barnacles, man. Yowzers. Is it imprinted on my butt? Are there imprints of it? Oh, God. Oh, I feel like it went in a little bit. Ugh. Now that the tide's gone out a little bit on my walk back, I'm walking as far into the water as I can because this area was previously way more covered with water. Uh, it's turning into something kind of icky. Oh no, God, it looks like 20th century. Uh. <coughs> yeah. That's like one of those beers from the 1940s. Ooh, it's even newer. Ugh. Pacifico, way. Pacifico. You never know what you're going to get around here. I almost didn't see it. Look at that. How the hell is that thing even surviving under under that rock? What a bizarre position to be in for an intact antique bottle. What the hell? If I move it, is this rock in front? Yeah, this rock's like on it, dude. I don't feel any embossing anyway. It looks like a crown top. Freaking. If I move that rock, it's going to actually crush that bottle. <laughs> Unless I just lift it straight up and it's almost too heavy with the barnacles. 
barnacles could slip off my hand and cut my hand open. Done that before, if I underestimate the weight of this rock. Yeah, not worth it for a crown top, 1915. Yeah, that's probably what that is, let's feel it. Yep, there's the crown. No embossing, I can feel. We'll leave that one there. Let's see how close they get before they see me. But I need love. I didn't scare him. <laughs> Unfazed city raccoons. Yeah. Well, all done. Getting late. These are the bots I got. <laughs> yeah, here's a creamer from Frisky Frisco, about 1930 on that. It's cool because it's embossed. Embossed. These bots are what I got. Is a good way to pack them, pack them, back them. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen to them in there. <sighs> if you get more than two, I don't know what to tell you. Just a little afterthought, side note. I'm walking back, ironically, through Dumpville, where the old Dumpville was, one of the main municipal city dumps of the 19th century. I spoke about it in one of my videos, but. Yep, I'm just walking on thousands of bottles right now, buried 10 to 20 feet below my body. <laughs> Dumpville. Actually, they did a hole there one time, like 15 years ago, right where this grass is. And I got, I climbed down there. Like, I wish I was filming back then. I climbed down there on a ladder. It's kind of freaky. And yeah, I was pulling out bot, man. 1880s, 1890s. Whew. Just way in the mud. I actually found a spoon down there, a brass spoon that I, I still use for my cereal today. It's like a giant soup spoon. <sighs> Making out with a Victorian person. Every time I eat cereal. Yeah, that's the origin of my soup spoon. 20 feet down below these, these streets, I tell ya. Yeah, I miss digging down here back when I could afford to live in this state. Holy crap, man. You have to walk like freaking miles back to your car, back where there's actually no parking restrictions, back where you don't have to pay like $20 an hour to park. Walking miles, man. It's ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous, right? Still walking. Now I'm dangerously crossing the railroad tracks. <sighs> just to get back to my car, so... So I didn't pay $40 just to exist here today. Oh my God. 
I'm realizing it's actually harder to park in the city now than it is to find century old antique glass buried in it. Why do they make it so hard for you just to exist and do normal things like park a car? <laughs> Democrats! <laughs> oh, sorry, allergy. I just came back and found this on my car. I thought it was a ticket, so I'm actually really glad. Nice parking job, ass. <laughs> well, I see people in California are still pricks. <laughs> yeah. Look at this ironic sign right next to the note. <laughs> We stand for United Against Discrimination, Harassment, and Retaliation. Aww. People here are so sweet. Let's read it in their voice. Nice parking job, ass. <laughs> How about leaving me more than three inches to move? I know you think that's huge, but your dick size is smaller than you think. Happy New Year. Buck <laughs> Oh man, you can move that little hollow plastic barricade. Oh, do not move barricades or you'll be towed. Jeez. Caught in a web of rules. Maybe I'm the jerk. Who knows? Who cares? Help bottle Ned keep the dirt flying and the cameras rolling. If you can, donate a couple bucks on Patreon. And it even helps a lot just to click like on the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, guys. Bottle!